When I was first given this phone, my parents explained to me what an absolute privilege it was to have one. When I was your age, I would have given an absolute kidney to have one of these. Now, at the time, I knew that this type of statement was merely figurative language. But by the looks of your faces as I dropped it tonight, I can't help but feel that you'd quite literally have preferred me lose my kidney. Welcome to Unity Grammar. As someone who has grown to love and cherish this place, I welcome you all to my second home. I would call it my first home, but given my context as a 17-year-old living in the 21st century, I think that that title goes to this brilliant little trinket right here. 6.7 inch display, XDR OLED, HDR10 Dolby Vision processor, A17 Bionic chip with six core CPU, five core GPU, connectivity Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, telephone UWB, ceramic shield, dust repel, face ID. I'm sure you'd have no problem repeating after me. And I'm sure Apple would have no problem hiring me. We are all in the digital age, where this type of information is the equivalent for the of the alphabet for some of us. For most of us, however, this is our home. This is our world. This is our whole universe, all wrapped up into a convenient little pack into a convenient little package of wires, programming, and an insignificant little thing I like to call addiction. According to the United Brain Association, the definition of addiction. Sorry. The definition of addiction is a digital is the harmful dependence on digital media and devices that interferes with daily activities. For those of you who rely on ChatGPT for your definitions today, digital addiction is the harmful dependence on digital media, including smartphones, tablets, computers, and the internet. Sound familiar? Well, for those of you who say no, let me put it in more simpler terms. Oh, sorry, got a bit distracted there. With an algorithm that targets our visual receptors, with an algorithm that ta targets our visual receptors, short form content like TikTok videos and Instagram reels impact our brain with a nice triggering dopamine release, leading to quick bursts of excitement and pleasure. Well, you may ask if it's giving me short term gratification, then isn't that better than watching a movie, spending hours and hours on the TV? Well, not necessarily. Short form gratification is extremely concerning as a rising trend among the populace. Just like drinking addictions, drug addictions, or gambling addictions, mindlessly scrolling between short clips means that your capacity for giving something time, focus, and attention is limited to just 30 seconds. In fact, most of us struggle to even watch the 30 second clips anymore. This is particularly problematic for our youth and their education. As someone who still goes to school myself, I see it firsthand. Back in 2004, the average, the average attention span was close to three minutes. Now decreasing incrementally over the years, this has reduced to a mere eight seconds. With education and learning experiences moving primarily online, and these types of numbers becoming more and more prone to concern, how can we expect students to retain eight hours worth of information? I think we're beginning to realize the fact that we simply can't. Whether attending a lecture, reading complex textbooks, or tackling challenging problem sets, constant mental switching and fragmentation undermines their ability for deep, meaningful learning. Research even indicates that students with short, shorter attention spans perform worse on tests, struggle to retain information in the long term, and find it harder to connect disparate ideas into a cohesive understanding.
This adversely affects not only their grades, but also their genuine comprehension and proficiency in the subject. It is no secret that teachers are beginning to struggle with engaging their class. One teacher, 30 students, all in 30 different worlds, bound by nothing but the classroom which they share. I see this myself on a daily basis. There isn't a class I leave except while hearing comments like, I did not understand any of that, or I tuned out after he said good morning class. Contrary to what many parents and educators believe, these children are not simply crazy or disrespectful. They've merely grown used to having the world in their pockets. Their minds have been conquered by it, and most of them don't have the tools nor the desire to escape it. Beyond academics, the, attention, the addiction crisis also impacts students' mental well, well-being. Persistent digital communication elevates stress levels and causes cognitive fatigue, contributing to increased anxiety, depression, and burnout. When the brain is constantly overworked, shifting between you know, different screens and different stimuli, achieving the calm, focused state necessary for optimal learning becomes increasingly difficult. It is no coincidence that the demand for psychologists has increased by 13.3% 13 13 when an entire upcoming generation has been entrenched into constantly pulling out their phones to see a load of unrealistic beauty expectations they must somehow imitate, impossible levels of wealth they must somehow accumulate, and a wave of negative comments they must pretend to be unaffected by. Now, as we know, the mind and the body are not separate. What affects one shall affect the other. And so too do we see this when looking at addiction. In the words of Shakespeare himself, our bodies are our gardens to which our wills are gardeners. With digital addiction poisoning our minds and poisoning our wills, we see this manifest into our physical selves as well. The increased penetration of digital devices has made sedentary behavior not only common, but trendy. In the current age, putting oneself in a position where they have no work and no responsibilities is considered the life. Why? Because the youth are consuming these influences like popcorn who say so. It is no coincidence that obesity levels have increased by 450% since 1990, 28% of gym members are quit quitting shortly after beginning, and 50% of the populace are affected by consumer si vision syndrome. This manifests into the socialization world as well, with youth no longer meeting at the park or feeling the sand between their toes, or even throwing a ball around on the weekends. Instead, it's the PlayStation and chips. You're connected through a wire and nothing more. Instead, it's a teleparty. Press the link and suddenly you're watching the same movie as your friend. You're together, only you're not together. Many will argue that this is just a matter of convenience, just a matter of globalization, just a matter of removing social barriers. But is it truly the removal of social barriers or is it the imposition of them? Over-reliance on digital communication means that although we, are, well, although we are proficient in the art of FaceTime, we are lacking in face-to-face -face interaction. When we are so used to being protected by a screen in every interaction, one has confidence in the fact that they can come back an hour later to reply or have time to formulate a response. They have tools like AI and the internet on hand to come up with the most eloquent of responses. But what happens in the real world where such luxuries don't exist? What happens when they need to communicate and form real relationships with actual people? <clears throat> Suddenly, proficiency escapes them, and society is left with an entire generation of youth who lack the ability to sit a job interview. So I think we can all agree that it's not a matter of whether this exists or not. This issue is very real. The situation that we find ourselves in is very much real. It's more a question of what, if anything, are we going to do about it? Shall we continue idly wandering along a path of meaningless and wasted time, sitting inches away from each other in space, yet universes away in thought? Shall we, continue, shall we continue being connected to the entire world while neglecting our own very intimate and familial worlds? Or is there a third option we are yet to consider? Perhaps we could simply let the phone fall. Thank you.